Yeah, so the Jagaban himself is one year in office today. He don't knock one year. 12 calendar months. Complete. 29th of May. 2023 to 29th of May. 2024. He don't complete. Uh, so the earth don't go around the sun. Complete with Ashwaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the president of Nigeria. <laughs> I've been waiting for this day and I told you people. Eh? My, my, my focus today is not, I'm not going to be distracted. We just go straight to the point. Mm -hmm. You want to know what is the rundown of this president for one year now? 12 calendar months. You want to know? Uh -huh. I will show you. Starting from Emiloko. Yeruba, our local. I go play them for you now. Down to where we are. So have patience. So that you watch this video. Complete. Are you, are you, are you following me? The video I want play for Ona. Ona go see towards the ending. They come blow the trumpet of their biggest achievements in this one year. And who blow that trumpet? Ajuri Ngalari. Eh. I don't tell Ona before now. The other day, Tinubu was bragging. Say, hey, hey, today is my day of bragging. When they went to launch the uh, uh, coastal superhighway, uh, Lagos to Calabar. You know, uh, hey. he said, it's his bragging day. So he did brag about the coastal line, Lagos to Calabar. When I go here, we're in spokesperson, the presidential spokesperson, during Galar, as he take, repeat them. Yes, sir. To show, say, hey, that they are serious achievements for one year. Nine be this. That project will swallow trillions of naira. At the time, Nigerians are hungry. Eh? Nobody say that road is of any economic importance to anybody. At this time, wanna hear me? So take your time. Oh. Watch, yes, sir. Watch the video. Watch it to the end, so that you will understand when I tell you that these governments, there's nothing about them. Oh. and that was why they came and told you. We are celebrating on a low key because they have nothing to say to Nigerians. Nothing. And this video I will play for you. Go prove that point. Are you getting me? So those Yoruba people that they were confusing that time. Our local, our local, our local. I want to carry people now back to memory lane. Where people were dancing. Our local, Amy local, our. So this time now, are you still shouting Amy local, our local? Have you been locked? <laughs> Ibla said, I don't talk too much. Let us go straight to the video and watch it. Whatever you have to say, come and put it in the comment section. I give you the rundown of Mr. President one year in office. Go watch. Yoruba <laughs> After a hard-fought election, Bola Tinubu fulfilled his lifelong ambition by becoming Nigeria's fifth president in the Fourth Republic. He clinched victory with 8,794,726 votes. I, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. As remain a new era for the nation. On May 29, 2023, Tinubu took the oath of office, promising change and progress for Nigeria. His first year in office began with bold moves, including the removal of the fuel subsidy. It set the stage for a turbulent start to his presidency. The economy is going through a tough patch, and you are being hurt by it, I know. The cost of fuel has gone up. Food and other prices have followed it. Households and businesses struggling. Things seem anxious and uncertain. I understand the hardship you face. I wish there were other ways, but there is not. On May 30, the new president met with the heads of state owned oil company and the CBN governor for an economic briefing. The following day, Tinubu engaged in discussions with a Chinese delegation laying the groundwork for increased economic cooperation. Tinubu's first month in office saw a strong emphasis on security and governance. At the start of June, he convened a security meeting 
running against uncoordinated effort in tackling security challenges. He then made his first appointments, including his chief of staff and secretary to the government of the federation, signaling the direction of his administration. On June 13, he fulfilled the campaign vow, signing the student loan bill into law, aimed at providing interest-free loans for underprivileged Nigerians pursuing higher education amid a cost-of-living crisis. Ultimately, the bill was revised a number of times before being formally ratified in April. Later that month, he inaugurated the National Economic Council. The pace of change was a sign of things to come. Within weeks, Tinubu replaced all the security chiefs. On June 20, the president made his first official trip abroad, visiting France and then on to London for what his handlers termed a short private visit. The following month saw Tinubu's leadership recognized regionally as he was elected the chairman of the economic community of West African states. His international engagements with leaders, including the U.S. President, the United Nations Secretary General, and Britain's King Charles, further solidified Nigeria's position on the world stage. We are taking our sovereignty and respect back around the world. Back home, Tinubu made key appointments, including Jim Obaze as a special CBN investigator in July. But the president barely scraped through the constitutional requirement to name minister and nominees within 60 days of inauguration. And even then, he sent in only a first batch of 28 names. In August, he inaugurated his 48-member cabinet, including nine former state governors, drawing criticisms for delays and the pedigree of appointees. On the diplomatic front, Tinubu made his debut appearance at the 78th United Nations General Assembly in New York on September 19th. He delivered Nigeria's official statement, highlighting the country's priorities and concerns. In October, President Tinubu marked Nigeria's 63rd independence anniversary with a national broadcast and ceremony at the presidential villa. He approved the provisional wage of 35,000 naira for six months to cushion the effect of subsidy removal on workers as the cost of living crisis really began to bite. The Supreme Court's affirmation of Tinubu's electoral victory came on October 26, further solidifying his mandate and paving the way for his administration to continue its work without legal challenges. I've started from day one to work hard, regardless of you know, uh, the court cases, okay. And uh, just strengthen my resolve uh, to do more. As the year progressed, Tinubu presented his inaugural budgets to the National Assembly on November 29. He then departed for Dubai to attend COP28, demonstrating Nigeria's commitment to addressing climate change. In the same month, Tinubu signed the Health Sector Renewal Compact, and approved the upgrade of key medical infrastructure across Nigeria. He also inaugurated the board of the NNPC Limited. Tinubu vows to uphold press freedom when he met with the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria on December 18. The subsidy removal and the currency liberalization are the most consequential of President Tinubu's policy actions so far. But Others have also been impactful to varying degrees. It is in the nature of, uh, of uh, developmental programming that uh, everything that you do will not be felt by everybody at the same time. So let's just be practical. Uh, you're constructing a, a, the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway. Uh, someone in Kano may not appreciate immediately what the impact of the Lagos Calabar Highway is going to mean for the people in Kano, for example. But as we are constructing to completion the Abuja Kaduna uh, Kano uh, Superhighway, for example, uh, the people in Kano can attest to the impact of that, whereas someone in Port Harcourt will not be able to appreciate the impact of that highway because it's simply not a direct impact. Uh, that's the nature of development programming. But I think what we are focused on is making sure that what is done is thoroughly communicated. Not just communicated in the form of some sort of audio propaganda, 
but communicated in a way where people can see what we're doing. There is clarity. They can watch and see what we're doing. I think anybody who is monitoring, for example, the Lagos to Calabar superhighway at the moment would recognize the, 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 the bevy of uh, drone shots and uh, uh, media presence along that corridor, capturing the video almost on a daily basis and putting it on the social media and traditional media and the like. This is what we believe development reporting should look like. And uh, we should give kudos also uh, to the Nigerian media, including, uh, you know, uh, uh, news stations like Arise who are putting out this content and ensuring that Nigerians know what is happening around them, uh, whether it's always in the interest of government's image or not, frankly. Uh, Nigerians deserve to have uh, full disclosure. For centuries, the Ijele has been a revered masquerade in Igboland, a predominant tribe in southern Nigeria. The Ijele is a grand spectacle that commands respect, awe, and celebration. Today, Innocent Vehicles brings you the Ijele in a new form. A majestic, robust, and monolithic pickup truck designed to leave an indelible mark in the annals of automotive history. The Innocent Ijele is equipped with a powerful 3.0 L turbo engine and 4 WD to conquer any terrain with ease. Make way for the Innocent Ijele, Innocent Vehicle, the pride of African roads.